Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. Your eminences, dear bishops, uh, fathers, brothers, sisters, today is the first uh, Sunday of Lent. Along with that, uh, I'd like to offer this Mass a thanksgiving for these uh, three beautiful, fruitful days during which uh, we'd like to thank the Lord uh, for giving us uh, this uh, assembly opportunity, this place. At the same time, uh, we'd like to thank uh, one another and pray for one another during this Mass. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through, through my fault, fault through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostril the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he has formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various three grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God has made. The serpents asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat? from any of the tree in the garden? The women answer the serpents, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden. Is this only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die? But the serpent says to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they saw fig leaves together and make round clothes for themselves. The words of the Lord. Merciful o Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, o Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. True love, wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense 
and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin then, and thus dead come to all men, in as much as all sin for upon to the time of the law. Sin was in the world. Through sin is not account when there is no law, but that sang, that sang from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many die. How much more did the grace of God and the graces give of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment and brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgression, brought acquittal brought of acquittal. For if by the transgression of the one that come to run through the one, how much more will those who receive an abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to run in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all. So, through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the, this, this subendent of the one man, the many was made sinner. So, through the abandon of the one, 
the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter And he said to him, All this I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him. Behold, angels come and ministered him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be seated. Hey, good evening, brothers and sisters. Sabadi Krab. This past week, uh, we started the sacred uh, season of Lent, where we are invited uh, to a time of uh, renewal and uh, transformation. Every time we begin this period in the life of the church, we hear many people asking the question, what should I give up uh, this Lent? If Lent is only reduced to giving up things and only taking back after Lent, then Lent becomes just a passing moment with no lasting effects on our lives. During Lent, I avoid alcohol. And on Easter Sunday, Christ has resurrected we are liberated, let me get drunk today. <laughs> During Lent, uh, I avoid going to casino. On Easter Monday, I will spend uh, about 2,000 US dollars uh, betting and... Lent must be a more lasting effect on our lives. First year, every year on the first Sunday of Lent, 
we hear the gospel passage on the temptation of Christ in the wilderness after his baptism. There have been many ways in which this passage has been expounded and reflected on. Essentially, in all three temptations of Jesus, the devil challenges the identity of Jesus by saying, if you are the Son of God, where else? Jesus had just been affirmed by the voice from heaven, this is my Son whom I love. The synodal journey is somewhat like Jesus' journey in the wilderness, challenging but necessary. It is necessary because it will only enable the church to better witness the gospel through a process of listening, encountering, and discerning. These issues before us, as we have heard these days, are perhaps overwhelming and daunting. But what is required above all is a change in the way. How do we do that? I would like to offer the word uh, L-E-N-T, Lent, as an acronym of this uh, attitudinal change as we journey together. First of all, L, letting go. If this journeying together is to be meaningful, we need to learn how to let go of all that uh, prevent us from being that synodal church. Shedding is a prerequisite for growth. A part of the resistance that we experience in the church in this synodal journey is the reluctance to let go. Letting go of our prejudices, biases, fears, and even the privileged status that we have acquired over some times. To move forward, we need to let go of things and attitudes, those things that hold us back from moving forward. Jesus even tells us that his disciples not to take anything on the journey, St. Luke chapter 9, 3. Letting go would also mean that we step out of our comfort zones, even though it may cause anxiety and irritations. It is the only way that we can move as a people of God. Letting go also means the willingness to be vulnerable. I believe vulnerability allows us to admit our own imperfections and that of others, and most importantly, accept, accept everyone that is still worthy of our love. So L, now E, encounter. Journeying on the path of a discipleship has a special goal, that is to encounter Christ. However, along this path, we meet many people, events, and experiences along the way. We can never walk this path blindfolded because if we do, we will only stumble or fall or go astray. The culture of encounter must be at the heart of the church's mission. In Asia, we encounter a variety of cultures, social, economic, political, and spiritual. In his morning meditation on the 13th of September, 2016, Pope Francis speaks of the culture of encounter. He says, an invitation to work for the culture of encounter in a simple way as Jesus did. 
Not just seeing, but looking. Not just hearing, but listening. Not just uh, passing people by, but stopping with them. Not just uh, saying, oh, what a shame, poor people, oh, poor ragazzo. But allowing yourself to be moved uh, with uh, compassion. And then to draw near, to touch and say, do not weep. And to give at least a drop of life. If we, the church, are going to be the bridge that helps people to encounter God, we must also bridge the divisions that continually holds us back from moving forward. L E N N. Now, N. Neighborliness, neighborliness. The parable of the Good Samaritan was uh, preceded uh, by the question, Who is my neighbor? Luke uh, 10 29. In the end, uh, it was the one who showed mercy. In Asia, we are a minority and we live amidst uh, so many tensions that includes uh, social, political, and even religious. Amid such tension, the temptation may be to regress, to build a defense shield around, or in the extreme conditions, <clears throat> to retaliate to the extremities. We recognize that in Asia, many conflicts often derive from deeply religious deeply rooted religious and ethnic differences and struggles over minority rights. In Asia, we realize the majority bullies the minority. Such tensions are not uh, helped when religions are made to use for political expediency. Militarization. So how do we live neighborliness in such a harsh conditions? Just for an example, with our context in Myanmar, we try to bridge between the civilians and the military. 80% of our people are fighting against the military. Civil war for almost two, over two years already not with the foreign invaders, but a brother killing a brother, a sister killing a sister. Shootings, killings, burning houses and villages, bombing churches and monasteries and pagodas, civilian forces killing the soldiers, police and the government of personnel, and military uses or airstrikes. In fact, both sides are losing. At least 7,000 civilians have been killed, and so also about 7,000 7, soldiers and police, police also have been killed. Millions in the IDB camps hiding in the jungle, and thousands and thousands from Myanmar, they run to this Thai border. Of course, within uh, that, uh, we are very grateful to His Eminence, Colonel Krinsak, and the uh, Caritas Thailand for uh, taking care of these refugees. Uh, here, peace building is uh, difficult and uh, misunderstood. Uh, we are blamed for approaching the military for peace. Blamed especially by our own uh, good Catholics. Suspected also by the military following wherever you go, what you do and what you say with the pretext that uh, they are for your security. So Good Friday is never ending and long way of the cross. So nothing is predictable now. 
But we believe that after going through this long, dark tunnel, we will see the light at the end. The dawn is sure to come. Peace is possible, and peace is the only way. We are grateful that Monsignor Andrea Ferranti, our Charge de Fer of Myanmar Apostolic Nunciature, is much concerned and love for Myanmar, and he lives with the people of uh, Myanmar. So the work of uh, reconciliation, healing, and uh, peace building must be at the heart of the church's life and ministry. The church exists for all and not just for the baptized. We acknowledge that the church exists to evangelize. In the context of Asia, there are places where a direct proclamation will be met with opposition and even persecution. Being a missionary disciples is not about preservation, but about being a neighbor to others, being the face of God's mercy and compassion to others. Lastly, L-E-N-T, T transformation. In Psalms 104, we read these words. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. In this synodal journey, we are called to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Despite all these human efforts, we must keep reminding ourselves that the work of transform transforming comes from God and God alone. In the Atsumus prayer that we often always pray, the Holy Spirit, we say that uh, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. The Holy Spirit dwelling within us can and does transform our lives, the church, and the world. Therefore, we are walking together to bring about a renewal in the life of the church. We need to trans the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. By ourselves, we cannot achieve anything, but we need that transforming grace to make all this uh, happen. Much of the anxiety of the synodal journey is caused by uncertainty of whether the change will happen. We are talking about uh, what will happen within 2023 and uh, 2024. They are around us, not around us, maybe far away around there. Some would have a very negative note and uh, after two years of preparation, 2023 to 24, after 24, also the church will be the same. Peromnia secula seculorum. We must learn to entrust this journey to the Spirit because it is only the Spirit that can give direction and definition to our witness as a church. In conclusion, if the temptation ended with these words of Jesus, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Our synodal journey must begin with these same words, recognizing that we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. We then walk this synodal journey as we seek to serve him alone. On this journey, May we embrace the, embrace the attitudes of letting go, encountering, and neighborly, neighborliness, and allow the transforming power of the Holy Spirit truly renew the face of the earth. Amen.
คริสตันฟอร์อัลคริสเตียนคอมมูนิตี้ในเอเชียดับเบิลไม่บีอาเมชชันนารีคอมมูนิตี้ในทุกเวลาทุกเวลาคอมมูนิเคติ้งทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุก But experience the comfort of God's personal love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us at this celebration, that we may totally commit ourselves to follow Jesus Christ, who is the true way, and let His light guide us, so that we could bring the light of love to our brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your family, gracious Father, as we begin our Lenten season, and help us to be faithful. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Almighty Father. For the will and glory of his name, for the good and the good of our his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread out throughout the world and bring us into the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, Myself, your humble servant, all the bishops here, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs into eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray to the Father in the words Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our hearts are filled with gratitude as we offer symbolically the draft statement and entrust them to our bishops, represented by Cardinal Charles Bo, the president of FABC. The draft document uh, will be brought by the youngest member of our community. Uh, he is the hope of our present, our young people. Please, come forward. And uh, we know that this is not just a document. It represents our experience of communion, participation, and mission these past three days. It is brought by our secretaries, our heroic secretaries, representing our groups and carrying the candle that has guided our three days, you know, warming up our relationships with one another as we try to open up to one another, as we listen to one another. A sign of the Spirit that has guided our discernment, our searching of the will of God. And uh, lighting our path as we search for new pathways in the synodal renewal. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless the light that you have given us, which is Jesus Christ. We are grateful for the light, Jesus, you have given to us. And may we, all of us, pass on this light of Christ to all our brothers and sisters in the continent of Asia. May bountiful blessing, O oh Lord, we pray, come down upon your people. Renew now with the heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O oh Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. A bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be sured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we all sit down. We return to our seats, bringing the light of God to all our places in Asia. Maybe just a word of uh, thanks, uh, dear friends. As we come to the conclusion of Asian Continental Assembly, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude, which was already expressed by the Archbishop of Tokyo, Archbishop Kikuchi. First of all, in this Eucharist, we have uh, rightly thanked God for this assembly for without the heavenly graces, all this would not have been possible. Thank you to each one of you for making time for this uh, Continental Assembly. From your busy schedule, you have taken time to be involved in the synodal process, not only at your diocesan and national levels, but also here at this Asian level. The Church of Asia is indeed grateful for your generosity. Your presence indeed is an expression of the deep love for, your, for the church, local and universal. And also gratitude also goes out to all those who assisted at us at Bampu One. We thank Gardiner Francesco Krinsak and the staff and the seminarians and collaborators and the singers and every one of us, any one of you, 
Your assistance in taking care of the various needs help make this a sacred and safe space to pray, discern, and work together. To our organizing teams, the discernment and writing team, you have worked tirelessly in preparing for this event. Thank you so much. But not the least, to Cardinal Mario Gregg, Sister Natalia Bakwat, Cardinal Jean Goleric, and all those coming from Rome. Thank you for being with us. Before you finish your jet lag, you are going back again with another uh, double jet lag. Uh, double jet lag. And then two jet lag with minus, two minus will make one plus. And the other. So, yeah. so the gentle presence of your team was indeed a reassuring and surely. As you return home, I wish you a safe journey and may the Holy Spirit continue to renew and reinvigorate the church in Asia. As a token of, uh, of appreciation, we'd like to present uh, a little gift uh, in the name of everybody to His Eminence, Cardinal Mario Gregg. From the Church of the Island, also His Eminence Green Sack is giving a gift uh, to Kenya. May I say two words? <laughs> your Eminence, Cardinal Mario Greg, and also Your Eminence, Holeric, Eminence Cardinals. Excellencies as bishop, brand, uh, bishops, brothers and sisters in Christ. The first verse is, first of all, I wish to welcome all of you to Thailand, our land of smile, on behalf of the other sister of Bangkok. I felt honored that member of the Central Committee of FABC had chosen Ban Pu Wan, pastoral training center of the other sister of Bangkok at the venue of this conference. The Archdiocese of Bangkok has great pressure to host and col collaborate with all of you for this conference. As you got to the theme of the working document for continental state, enlarge the space of your tent. It's really very beautiful, important, and it's very timing for the positive action globally as a need of one world with a common plan of action to reflect the policy of the Catholic Church. And now the second word. It's time, in the same time, to say farewell. I would like to say with the same spirit, all of you have experienced together during this day, the spirit of fraternity, communion, listening to one another. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, farewell, have a good and safe trip on your different ways back home. Till we meet again, goodbye. Please stand. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for your words of welcome at the same time, uh, farewell. I, I think you are too generous. Uh, we have experienced the last October, two and a half weeks. You give us too much, too generous, and uh, perhaps we are taking too much advantage of your kindness, goodness. You know. Thank you so much for the thing, and uh, we hope uh, in future to come again and again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The bad is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.